Hello, everybody, or should I say shalom to you all? This is Shalom in the Home. And ladies, I am so thrilled to be with you today, or if you're watching this later, and we have had so much unrest happening, haven't we? And so how do we take that unrest? How do we take that lack of shalom and then bring it into home? And you know, as we've talked so many times, it is the women who bring that attitude into the home. So today I thought, what am I going to talk about? I've been thinking about this since last month. And the thing that the word, I'm going to do a word study today. Some of this I've gotten off from the internet. Others is my own um, experiences and also from the scriptures. Um, lately, I was given a beautiful tree of life version of the scriptures that I've been using a lot lately that has so much um, of the Hebrew words in it. So it really is, is incredible. Um, but today, I'm going to talk to you about the word Ahava. And, and we can hear that ah, just like in Sarah, Abraham. Um, and it is the breath of God. It's also the feminine aspect of the word. Now, maybe some of you have even seen different cosmetic um, items by the name of Hahava. I know when I was in Israel, I was able to go to the Hahava, Ahava plant and see how they make all their things and all of their um, different um, cosmetic items. And they use a lot of things from the Dead Sea Scroll that are so wonderful. And so maybe when you're in the store, you've seen that. Maybe you've heard that word, but I know we've used and, and seen that word in the scriptures over and over. And the word ahava can be either a verb or a noun. But you know, we always talk <clears throat> that the Hebrew language is so much that God is a verb. So much is not just our belief, but how do we act upon that belief? And unfortunately, the word love has been tossed around, hasn't it, forever. I remember years ago, and my husband, um, Charles, was saying to someone that he loved them, and they saw it as the love of like a love for a person but in a way that was more like a husband or a wife. And that was not at all what my husband was meaning. And so unfortunately, so many times we have gotten that word, ahava, love, to mean something of an emotion. All of us can remember when we were younger or teenagers or whatever, and we would have crushes. And or we saw somebody that was so attractive or we would love to later on read sometimes novels and some of the greatest love stories are right in the scriptures, aren't they? Look at how Jacob loved Rachel. And so let's go a little deeper today for you. And I'm going to ask you the question, how do you exhibit love? because it is much more than an emotion. Do you know that the word love, hava, which has a root with an aha, and that all Hebrew words usually have a three letter root, and we can go into that a little bit later. But the most important thing that I want to get across to you today is that love means giving. I'm sure all of you know the verse that God gave his only begotten son. 
his only unique son. He loved so much. And you know, for so many of us, it's how can we comprehend that God would love each one of us so much? Because sometimes we look at ourselves and say, wow, look what I've done. But God is such a loving, forgiving God. But when you use this word love from now on, I want you to just look at it and say, how am I giving? Well, if you're in the household and you're married, you are going to be giving a great deal to your husband. If you have children, you will be giving a great deal to your children. And there's times in all of these, in the husband or in the children, that you don't feel very loving towards them. You might have a bad day or they have acted really in a way that's really hurt your feelings. And at that point, you don't feel very loving. That's an emotion. But, you know, really deep down, you still love your husband. You still love your children. Let's look at the, that film, Fiddler on the Roof. And Tevia asked Golda, Golda, do you love me? Do you love me? And she said, what? I mend your socks. I cook your food. I do this. I do that for you. And you're asking me, do I love you? So unfortunately, so many times we have this idea that love is this uh, emotion, that it's a, a sexual thing that it is, we, we have a lust for, or sometimes we can even say, I love this so much. It could be a certain food. It can be a certain show that you watch. And sometimes that gets misconstrued. And this love of certain things can overtake your love for what you're going to do and how you're going to act. Because God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He doesn't say, if you love me, oh, if you love me, just think about it. Do you love me? God says, if you love me, act upon it. It's not that I just believe in you it is how my actions so let's take that to the home you might be having a day that's just really hard and how do you exhibit that light that love to your household and to all of those around you I have told you many times I've kind of been known as the bread lady Anytime somebody moves in my neighborhood, I make them bread. And it is an act of love. I don't just say, welcome to the community. I can do that with my words. You can tell somebody you love them. But what does that really, really mean? So if you are embedded in knowing from the scriptures then you will begin to love God. I'm going to read you something. The English word for love has so many meanings. In modern thought, love is an emotion. It can be turned on or off with a switch. And ladies, you know that. Well, this is a story about a young man who told his father at breakfast one morning that he was going to get married. And how do you know you're ready to get married, said Abba, the father. Are you in love? And ladies, you've all heard that. Are you in love? Oh, I'm in love with so-and-so. Or one of your children said, I'm in love. I sure am, said the son. Well, how do you know you're in love? 
That's the father. Last night, I was kissing my girlfriend goodnight and her dog bit me hard. And I didn't feel that pain at all until I got home. That was his understanding. He was so infatuated with his girlfriend that he didn't even feel the pain. This is a, an understanding of many people how they see love, but love can be interpreted so many ways. So love or ahab in the Hebrew mindset is very different, very different. And in today's culture, Love is connected directly, as I said before, with action and obedience. Strong's Concordance says, to have affection, sexually or otherwise, love like to be friend or to be intimate. Love is action. Love is obedience. And so how do you convey that to your household? How do you convey that to those around you? To get a clear understanding of it, we're going to examine the word ahab itself because really it is a verb and a noun. So if you know the Hebrew letters, we have first the aleph. The aleph is a letter <clears throat> that the way it is written, it looks like, one part is going up to heaven, one part is going down to earth. So it's heaven and earth meet. It means one. And to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Did you hear what I said? I said the word love. How many times do you say the Shema in the morning when you get up in the night? Do you teach that to your children? That is so, so important. And Ahava, so the first letter is the Aleph. Then we will go to the Hay. And the Hay is almost like a door. And it has, it has an opening. And the first thing is our, our thoughts. What are your thoughts? Because ah, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever you're thinking, if you're not thinking very loving thoughts, are not thinking that you really are loving someone. You're to love your neighbor as yourself. And ladies, have you ever had it when you just felt like you just didn't love yourself very much? Or how could lo God love you? And that is so important because God does. He loves you so much and wants the very, very best for you. So in this hay, we have thoughts, we have speech, and we have deeds. And that makes up the letter hey. And how are you representing that love in your house? Because the next letter we're going to go to is the aleph, the hey, and then the vet. Or sometimes it when it has a dot in it, it is the bet. And when it's the bait, it represents a house. How is your household? How is your attitude? Are you going on love as an emotion or are you doing it as a verb? Are you acting in love even at times when you don't even feel like it? Our bodies, ladies, are this temple. And the Aleph reminds us we are to love the Lord God first. We're to do that by conforming our thoughts, our words, and our deeds to the five books of the Torah. And then how does it also relate back to the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament? Love is directed first to the, to the Lord God. Then to abate a house. It builds its sustenance in his presence. Wow. Ahava is the greatest. It is the greatest word. 
you know, sometimes we throw around these words and we say, oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. But then when somebody does something that isn't pleasing, you don't love them. Or you're not commanded to like everybody. There might be some people that you get along with a lot better than others. But we're commanded to love them. And if they need something, we're supposed to be there for them. But then I've had the experience when I had to do with one of my children. I had to exhibit tough love. And I think the Lord does that too. He sets boundaries. Those boundaries are our Torah. It tells us what to do or what not to do. It also tells us that by obeying his word, we're showing that we love him. That is so, so, so important and sometimes so easily misleading because we have this wrong definition of love. So let's go back to Yaakov, Jacob. He loved Rachel, Rachel so much. He was willing. Seven years, nothing, nothing. I can do that. I will do that because I love her so, so much. And what happens? Then Laban, Levan, which in Hebrew means white. He was a real scoundrel, wasn't he? And so he said, oh, no. Now you're going to have to go and do another seven years. But Yaakov did it. Now, maybe there was some love. I'm sure there was that he saw that she was so beautiful. But also his actions were, I will do anything because I love this woman so. And she was a godly woman, a godly woman. Otherwise, he would not have chosen her. It is so important, ladies, that you exhibit love to those around you. And that you do things for others by giving. Giving of yourself. Giving of your time. Giving of your finances. That is so important because that's the way you show you love God. Everything belongs to him. And when you come into the relationship with the Lord, isn't it so incredible that the love now that you have is so different and you're not so judgmental. When you're acting in love, just one small act of kindness is equal to all of the sacrifices in the temple. That's what I got off of somebody in the internet. Your gentleness to a specific person and your family who might drive you crazy is equal to perfectly observing the Sabbath if love is your motivation. So when you do something that normally you would say, oh, I, I, I just don't really want to do that. Or, I, you know, I'll do it another day. I really don't want to go bring some food or visit that person who isn't feeling good. Or really, you know, I, I, just, I just don't feel like it today. What is that word? I feel or I don't feel. And there's many, many times we don't feel, we might be down. And say, I really don't want to read my scriptures today. I really don't want to learn the psalm. I really don't want to go and bring somebody some food that's sick. But out of love, out of obedience, you do it. And afterwards, you are so, so rewarded. Love must be the motivation for any Torah keeping. Rules without relationship leads to rebellion. Isn't that so good? If you have just a bunch of rules 
like you might say to your children, you have these rules. God has rules. He has a house. He has certain rules for his house. But without a relationship, not a religion, but a relationship with him, without that relationship, it is those rules just become a bunch of nonsense and we rebel. How many times have teenagers done that? Or have we done that ourselves and said, no, I don't want to do that. I don't believe that. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Or even doing something for our mate or our children that we really didn't want to do because we weren't very happy with them before they took off for the day. Let's really look at this word deeper. How important it is to see love as a verb, not as just a feeling. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like getting up. I don't feel like going to services today or to my congregation. They asked me to do this and I just don't feel like it. Well, I think maybe we really should look at that word again and say, you know, it's all your attitude and what you do. So I'm going to give you some scripture and you can write them down and or you can take and look at them later. But when you love your neighbor, you are the most like Yeshua. He shows us his love by his grace. And so again, the Lord God loves us by showing his grace upon us in good and bad days. The Hebrew people were chosen by God from an entire world to be a royal priesthood and a peculiar people through the Torah. He chose them and chose you each one of you ladies, because of his grace. Now you choose to love him daily by following his commandments. Deuteronomy 7, 7 to 9. God did not have set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than any peoples, for you were the fewest of all people, but it's because he loved you and kept the oath he swore to you, your forefathers, that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Now, love is not, as I said before, just some fix. It's about giving devotion, devotion in his time. It is better to give than to receive. And when your true love is found in a person, it's never the same. He wants his children, God, to love him properly. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment, said Messiah Yeshua in Mark 12, 29, 31. What is it when we say the Shema? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. It all starts from right here in your heart. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Eshekayil, every Friday night, the man says over the woman, the words of kindness are always on her lips. You're acting in love. There are times when we go, oh my, I don't want to set the Shabbat table. I don't want to make this meal some, I don't want to go 
crazy in doing all this. But afterwards, I know myself, when days that I was working outside the home and I was tired and I invited all these guests, but by the time they sat down and they were so happy to be there and I saw their smiling faces, I went, wow, this is all worth it. And all my tiredness, everything like that just disappeared. And God filled me with such love for the people, a love for him and a love for the Shabbat, a love for the Sabbath. So let me go now. I'm going to find my scripture. About all these scriptures that talk about love. We've already said from John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he loved the world that he gave, do you hear? He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Knowing therefore, that God, your Elohim, is Elohim. He is the faithful Elohim, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Deuteronomy 7, 9. I love those who love me and those who seek me, find me. That is Proverbs eight seventeen. So this is how the Lord God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Since he loved us, we also also should love one another. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love the Lord, gets hates, hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love the Lord, whom he has not seen. So be very careful to love the Lord your God in Joshua 23 11. You see all of these verses about love. And the Savior replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it love your neighbor as yourself. Well, are there some days you just don't love yourself? but you're commanded to love yourself and know that God forgives you and that grace is sufficient for him. Love, we said, is a verb. It is giving. It is an action. First, we love God. And as if we love God, is that if you love me, feed my sheep. But then we also talked about having strong boundaries. Sometimes tough love means saying, no, because I love you, I will not allow you to do this. If you have a child that's so disrespectful or has you sometimes can't keep in the home, you have to say, because I love you, I cannot let you in at this time. You have to make that decision. God does the same thing with our boundaries. So what do you think in your mind, ladies? How are you directing your actions? How are you exhibiting love to those around you? It's not just saying, I love you. It's not saying to God, I love you, and then doing whatever you want. He totally gives us love. And it's not, as I said, a simple emotion. It is not a lustful way of thinking. It is the doing. Now, out of the doing, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong 
to have that attraction at all. It is great for your mate. That's part of the whole process of your marriage. But this is a covenant that you've gone into. And there might be things that you might not want to do ex exactly that was your, wasn't your choice for your mate or your children. But you do it out of love. Did you keep his holy days just out of obligation, but because he loves you and wants you to be a part of this? Do you do your Friday night Shabbat? Do you have a mezuzah on your door that knows this is a house of God? This is a house that honors God. This is a temple of the living God. And we are all priests and priestesses because of what he has done for us. So I come to you today in a world where there is such hate. There is such hate. There's such hate for Israel. For, and it is the apple of his eye. He loves his people. And if you are part of being in Yeshua, then you are part of the Israel of God. And by not saying anything is saying something. Step out of your comfort zone. Start living a life of love for one another. And even for those you might not be even so eager to spend time with. But in action, pray for them. As you pray for people that maybe have hurt you, it is amazing what it will do to your spirit. So as you begin in a few days, your Shabbat table, center it with love. When you make your food, you make your challah, you make it with love. When you care for your children, when you go out of your way to help somebody, you're doing this in love. How incredible is that? So let's take this word, ahava, and have the breath of God in each one of us. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for your Jewish brothers and sisters that are in Israel, that can't, some of them trapped, some of them, can you imagine ladies in your home now with your little children and not knowing what's going to happen? This is so important. So just don't say it, act upon it. My husband's favorite saying all the time was, you are loved. And so some of us have adopted that also. Not saying that sexually you are loved by me, but it is you are loved because God loves you so and I am pressing upon you to know that look at yourself and say, you are loved. Think of yourself as being loved by the highest being there could be that he created you. There is no one else like you. And isn't that incredible? So think highly of yourself. Fill your house with the abundance of love. I praise the day that I found Yeshua and said, wow, I come to you and I am waiting to see what my life is going to be and transform, trans, be transformed and it has been. So ladies, may I bless you today. May you have an attitude of love. You can always get in touch with me. I'd love to hear from you. May you be blessed and you are loved. Thank you.